In addition to the main story arc that you follow within your novel, there will be a series of mini-stories inside the main story. These are called subplots. Subplots can also help to fill in the periods between the climaxes, between the periods of high tension. They help to balance the flow of your novel. It's important that your subplots don't take away from the essence of the novel itself and the main plot. It's a good idea to have a physical representation, such as a table on paper, of how your subplots are going to slot within the broader framework of your story. Maybe they'll work with certain chapters, but not others. Maybe you want to drive the main plot and subplot side by side, or keep them separate. Keep trying to fit and reorganise your subplots within the framework of your main plot, so you always have sight of the larger picture. An example of a subplot could be about someone close to the protagonist. Maybe he has an ex-wife tugging at his heartstrings. It doesn't directly affect the main plot, but it does reflect real life, and it makes the story more believable to the reader. This support character would probably also be a three-dimensional character with depth, so he can undergo an inner transformation throughout the story, just like the protagonist, but perhaps to a lesser extent because he's not the hero. The wonderful thing is that it's all up to you. You're the creator of this world. Now that you're aware of how a basic novel is expected to flow, it's quite tempting to follow that exact trajectory and plan. To give yourself the plot devices you need to make the story work in your eyes. However, while the story arc described in the previous video does exist on a graph on paper, your story really shouldn't work that way or so easily. Your novel cannot be a series of events just strung together in a cohesive way for the sake of convenience and because it helps you to plan your novel. People want the novel to flow naturally and any subplots need to be intertwined with the main plot in such a way that it's completely believable. Think of your story in terms of the dichotomies of problems and solutions, and of questions with answers. Your story needs to have a larger picture instead of just being a string of isolated events. If you view your beginning as the point at which the question is posed, the big question, it is the ending where this question gets answered. The whole process is established through character actions and motivations and several other factors which we'll outline later in the course. These drive the story forward. Additionally, you need to be able to weave elements of your story together in a cohesive way. The author achieves this by using narrative and settings.